Hello everyone, this is Anna again. Um, we're now going to do part 10 and we're going to talk about the cerebrum's motor functional areas and this will also be a relatively short video um, and I, I will re-emphasize the fact that I have a bunch of note slides in the learning modules so these are all in your PowerPoints and you have them. So I'm not going to read all of these to you. All right, we're going to focus primarily on the pictures and so you can see I've got several of these that kind of talks about each one of the general areas and again I've really condensed what you have in your book down to a lot less material so you really want to focus on what's in these PowerPoints as you are trying to decide how much to memorize. Okay so here we are looking at the same picture we looked at in the video for the sensory areas of the cerebrum. Get this a little bit, oh, sorry. All right, so again, we've got our central sulcus, and this is our post-central gyrus, where you found your somatosensory cortex, all right? Now we're gonna focus on the pre-central gyrus, which is done in this dark, bright red, and this is where our primary motor cortex is going to be located. All right. And then this part is called the premotor motor cortex. Okay. Um, this is also an association area. All right. And you're going to be doing some learned reflexes and stuff like that in there. We have some specialized areas that are not well highlighted. Um, actually, one of them is, but one of them isn't. So the frontal eye field is going to process motor information from your eyeballs, right? Not visual information, motor information. And then you've got the Broca's area, which is responsible for some of the components of language processing. All right, let's look at the next picture. All right, again, note slides. Here's what your primary motor cortex does. Here's how the premotor cortex is a little bit different. All right, the Broca's area is interesting. We also have a Wernicke's area. So this is a special motor area for speech and it is only found in the left hemisphere, which is also very interesting, okay? It controls muscles from moving mouth and tongue during speech. When people have strokes and they have difficulty speaking, it helps doctors realize that it, the stroke occurred in their left hemisphere because the Broca's area is over, only over in the left area, okay? This one talks about the um, fact that the motor, the frontal eye field is doing voluntary eye movements, processing that information, so just be aware of that. All right, um, all right. This is a little bit more information. Um, I want you to focus on the fact that we've got upper motor neurons because you're gonna use that information in pathophys when we talk about certain diseases. All right, so the upper motor neurons are gonna be having their, their cell bodies in that pre-central gyrus, okay? And then their fibers, so their, their motor neuron, the cell bodies are here, and then their axons are gonna project down into the spinal cord, typically, okay? We got a ton of them, 19 million, all right? Uh, spinal cord or brainstem, and that's where it's going to synapse with lower motor neurons. Okay, often associated with that cortical spinal tract, all right, they are gonna decuse in the lower um, medulla oblongata of the brainstem, okay? Um, <clears throat> so just be familiar with this, this information. All right, gray matter. So remember, basal nuclei are gray matter, okay? Um, and this gray matter is gonna be important for modulating intentional movements, okay? Um, it helps with repetitive movements. It helps smooth out movements. It helps you not think about it, okay? Which is really important for practice learned behaviors, all right? You get a really nice feedback circuit between the cerebrum, the basal nuclei, the thalamus, and then back to the cerebrum, okay? 
All right, we got some note slides on the cerebellum because the cerebellum is gonna be very integrated with what the cerebrum's motor areas are doing in order to um, help with motor coordination, posture tone, motor skills, all of this, all of this stuff. So I've got, again, I've boiled it down to the bare minimum, so this is just memorize it. All right, anytime you see the word pathway in an A&P course, it should pique your interest. Um, <clears throat> so what right here, what we're trying to do is demonstrate how the cerebrum and the cerebellum are working together. So we've got input to the cerebellum versus output from the cerebellum. Okay. So you can see right here, this is the whole motor cortex. This is the primary, the pre, the precentral gyrus where you have the primary motor center. And then this is the whole premotor cortex thing. And we've got a, a cell body right here, and the axon is going to stend down. And they've left out a bunch of parts, but we're going into the brainstem, and I want you to follow this red arrow. It's going to the cerebellum, okay? But we're also getting information from the eyeball, from the equilibrium parts of your inner ear, and we've got sensory proprioceptor information coming up from ascending tracts through the spinal cord and also up to the cerebellum, along with some other stuff. All right, so we're bringing a lot of information from different areas to the cerebellum. Then the cerebellum is going to process that information and it will send corroborating, helpful commands to the premortar cortex, letting it know, oh, this is what I'm going to do. And then here it sends out information where it is modulating learned movements, repetitive movements, muscle tone. Um, smoothing out movements so that they aren't shaky so that you don't have to think about making smooth coordinated muscle contractions you just do it okay and so how, that's a serious oversimplification of how it works but that's basically how it works and that's what i want you to think about when you're trying to put the cerebellum with the cerebrum and how it controls motor movement all right so here i have taken the somatotopy for the motor right here and for the sensory and laid it over. So this is going to be the post central gyrus and this is going to be the pre central gyrus. And you can see they, they are laid out roughly the same with, you know, the legs, body, torso, fingers, and then face. So legs, body, torso, fingers, face going around over here. Okay. And then over here. So the basic map is the same. And you can see that roughly these areas do have similar emphasis. So the sensory areas for the tongue and the face are bigger than for the forehead, just like the motor control of this part and the tongue is bigger than for the forehead, okay? The hand gets more sensory innervation. The hand gets more motor information than your butt, okay? So there is some similarity in those somatotopies. All right, here we've got the homunculus. And let me see, I've got them labeled which one is, oh, it's right up there, which one's motor and which one's sensory. So this is our motor guy and this is our sensory guy. And you can see similarities where the lips and the tongue and the hands are much larger for sensory innervation than for the arms. The same thing with the motor innervation to the face and tongue and the hands is much greater than for the um, arms. Now, I did pull out this homunculus guy. This one was, these two were made by the same artist, but this artist dude was a bit of a prude because he did not give accurate information on the genitalia. This little dude is far more accurate in terms of the innervation going to the genitalia. Um, unfortunately, I can't remember if this one was motor or sensory, and I didn't have the comparable one for it. But I'm assuming it's probably pretty similar whether it's sensory or whether it's motor. Okay. All right. Um, that's where we're going to end on this video and I'm going to stop recording and you can move on to the next one.